So what are you, the main goals of the spring? When you have so you have a lot of returning guys too, but some new guys. What are the main goals of the spring for you specifically? Yeah, I mean, I got a broad one of improvement. I mean, you know, we've progressively gotten better at every area of our defense. You know, in personnel to how we play and how connected we are in coverage to our pass rush and you know, so you know, there are specifics that we need to get into. Uh, for different concepts of coverages and pressures and things like that, but like just the constant growth and improvement with our guys is important to me. And you know, there's multiple ways to do that, uh, but it come down like we have certain things that we're going to do in meetings that maybe are a little bit different. Uh, we have certain things we're going to do in walkthroughs that are a little bit more where we're advancing things um, that'll connect stuff to on the field. So I mean, there's a lot of it. We, there were things that we implemented in tour duty um, that are just next step things that we're ready for that we're getting better at so you know i'm just i'm energized by what we got coming back but i'm more energized at the steps that i know that we can take how do you um when it comes to losing somebody like jamie it's not you can't just say okay shaheen go be jamie go fill that role but how do you try to fill the impact that number 10 had on your defense the last two years. Who, yeah, how think, do you go about doing that? I think multiple ways, you know. I think, Corey, what, what excites me is like the way that we were able to, I don't know, highlight, showcase Jamie's skills. Like now, whether it's incoming freshmen, whether it's Shaheem, Akeem, Duke, guys that are here, like they see within the system, like, okay, we're not gonna be put in a cookie cutter. Like if I'm good at this, this, and this, I'll be used like this, this, and this. So. It offers guys opportunities, you know, and now, um, you know, there's guys that come to me and say, can, can I do what Jamie did in these calls? You know, and like, I love that, you know, because it, it shows that, you know, guys see the benefits of learning multiple spots. Guys see the ability um, of what playmaking skills look like. And, you know, Jamie was a unique player, you know I mean? And I wasn't even sure what it was gonna look like. Right when we got him here, he was our nickel. Like, that's what it was gonna be. Um, and then, by week three or four, we started to make that process a little bit. And then this year, obviously, he played specifically more safety and dive. But uh, he's it, a hard one to replace. Well, sure. And, and, but you did you did bring in not a safety, but a corner, one of the best ones in the country on the, in the portal in, in Cyprus. What have you seen from him so far? I know you haven't practiced yet, but what? how has he fit into the room? How do you foresee him making an impact on the rest of the secondary? Did it allow, for instance, Duke Cooper to move to safety? Is that is that part of yeah, the reason? Yeah, I mean, it definitely allowed for us to move Duke. You know, the movement of Duke is just for us to be better as a secondary, mm. us to be better as a defense, right? There are moves individually, but it's all collectively to try to make them the best group we can be. Um, you know, I think Fentrell's got a chance to be a really special player, you know, because we've seen him do it in our league. But then when he's come here, he's basically taken on the role that I thought he would. Um, he's a pro in every way. Like, he just shows up, he works, he asks questions, he's supportive of his teammates. Um, he's got constant knowledge to try to grow. Uh, he was in my office just the other day, just for an hour, just watching. And I had specific questions and, um, you know, so just it's going through, you know, when you get somebody like that and some of these guys that are a little bit further along in their college career, you know, they're very purposeful in what they're looking for, which I love. And, um, you know, I just he's a really good fit for us personality wise and as a player. And when you throw him in with Renardo Green and Jari and Jones, how much does that help somebody like AZ learning from dudes that have been in the been in the college game for a long, long time? And what kind of leap do you accept, expect Azaria to make maybe in year two? You know, it's hard to generalize how those things impact each individual player. Um, but you know, I think Azaria on his own, you know, had a really good season. I mean, he played over 300 reps as a true freshman. And it was the second year in a row that we played true freshman in the secondary with Kevin Knowles and Duke the year before. And then even look at Shaheen. He didn't play at all as a, as a true freshman. And he might have been one of the better DBs we had last year in his role. Um, but I think, you know, how does it affect Azaria? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, we're going to roll him at nickel, roll him at corner. Same thing with J-Dub and Renardo. So, you know, I think it just offers more depth, more competition, more growth. And the better people you have in a room, the more growth you see the whole room because we use each other. Their experiences, I think, having guys come in from the outside, sometimes that lends 
other experiences, which offers growth for everybody. And I think the competition level, Coach Norvell talked about it, Coach Atkins has talked about it. Is that when a program can really start to get its footing is when you, you, you have guys that have played a lot of football that are fighting for second string, unlike your defensive line now. How much does that help just the overall defense? What happens this spring, the growth? Because if you don't play well, if you don't practice well, you can't get on the field now. Yeah, I think, you know, what you got to be careful. I, I love, I mean, competition is what drives all of us in every profession. I mean, it's critical to everybody's growth. But I'd like to even take it further than that from a standpoint of you can paint the picture of you don't play good, this guy's going to play, and you're not going to play. Right away when you do it, it – it drives a stake in between the two. It's either him or me. Right. And if you really go back to what the team's trying to do, like that's not how we build it. So you want to try to drive it as like, listen, don't be naive. There's competition. You may not travel. You may not play as much because of this. But at the end of the day, the competition is us with each other, not us against each other. And it's if the, if the main goal is trying to be your best and tap out on whatever your maximum potential is, well then, if we bring other people in that can help you get there, that's what it's got to be used for. Could you foresee a rotation of like 10 on the defensive line in games? Is I think it eight? so. I mean, listen, there could be times that we play with five defensive linemen on the field. I mean, that could be a possibility. We could play, we've played with four DNs on the field before. We could play with four defensive tackles on the field, you know, at times. I mean, there's certain combinations that aren't limited to what just football is used to, right? And if you recruit the right types of people and you have these, I don't want to say positionless defensive linemen, but when you have guys that can play a multitude of spots, it allows you for more flexibility with how you use them. What do you guys kind of see him do as far as, like, he can cover all DBs have to cover, but he can make that transition from corner to safety. Is it how he tackles? Is it maybe adding a bit of weight to be a safety, different responsibilities? Like, what did you see in Duke to be that potentially a safety type? Uh, he's really mature in his play, you know, and I just felt I felt we had enough depth at, at corner that allowed us to make a move with somebody. And I just went through the processes of, you know, how would how, how would Duke fit back there? How would the other guys fit back there? You know, who would grow the most? Who would take a step back if we did move them? Like that's all part of it. It's not just about Duke. It's about you know the other guys that it could impact and. You know, Duke's always been somebody that cares. He's got a high care factor. And he played, and he was banged up all year. And he fought through it. And he's got a high care factor. Um, he's smart. He, and the instincts at safety really show up. You know, at, at corner, it's a lot of change of direction and physical skill. You know, I think you can see a lot of instincts. He's super coachable. And I think if you get his eyes in the right place, he's really disciplined enough to make that count. And I think he can transition really well. And he's, you know, I don't think he's got to put it on a lot of size, but he already has. Um, and I think, you know, he's got physicality to him. He's got legit ball skills. And um, he's played the defense now for two years, which will really help the transition. Can you tell in March from a true freshman, mm -hmm. like the Graham kid, the linebacker, can you tell in March, like the first week, the first, well, the whole spring, okay, he's ready to make a jump or he has made a jump? Or is that something that just comes progressively incremental? So they get here as mid year guys or. Their next freshman, year, their redshirt coming. freshman year. Yeah, Can you tell I, I knew they made a Omar jump? probably by week seven, eight last year because we actually kept him up with us. Yeah, and he practiced with the second group and he he played through. We tried to, we're very intentional in doing that with him in practice, knowing that we thought he would have a real chance to help us. And we really thought that he was going to play late in the year. You know, we just we happened to stay healthy, and so we just didn't put him in. But this spring, like. There's no secret. Kalen Delos, DJ Lundy, Tatum Bethune have all played a lot of football for us. Brennan Gantz played football for us. But Omar is getting thrust into that group. We're going to put him in that position in this spring. So, you know, and I believe in him. And that's kind of what you want to do, I assume, across the board with these redshirt freshmen or even true freshmen that are here now. Kind of throw them into the fire a little bit as in spring. Well, I think and it's see to prepare them, yeah, and then put them in. Well, sure, yeah, for sure. And I think you know, there's a couple of guys that jump up that are like that. You know, Shaheen was like that last year. You know, we saw it coming. When we made the decision in fall camp. All right, he's going to be the third safety. And you know, we had Jarquez McCauley, who had a good, solid role the year before, was a good, solid player. And did Shai deserve that at that point? I don't know. That could be argued. Um, but I knew what it would look like if we invested that time into him, and I'm glad we did. You know, and I think this year Daniel Lyons comes up in that mind. You know, I think he's somebody that he fits in what we had with Omar in that mindset of like, 
young guy, true freshman. We redshirted him, but we, he, he will be in the rotation this spring.